Hi, Gary Stearman. Time for another update from Prophecy in the News. It's the 3rd of April. Uh, by the way, it is a Tuesday, and we wish you a good Tuesday. Had a couple of earthquakes in Oklahoma in the last few days, one near Shawnee, one near McAllister. Uh, one of them going up into the 4.5 to, to 5 range. Nobody has uh, quite pronounced a number yet, but I thought I would pass that on because we sort of watch earthquakes around here since uh, Jesus gave those as a sign of the end. And we've been experiencing numbers of earthquakes in Oklahoma in the last two or three years, uh, contrary to the years before when Oklahoma was a relatively stable place. So we're watching that. You know, used to be said, everybody talks about the weather, nobody does anything about it. But starting a few years ago, everybody decided, well, we should do something about the weather. Uh, I'm looking here at a news release from uh, February 27th, 2009. <clears throat> well, uh, that's about three years ago. And three years ago, if you recall, there was a, a very hotly uh, waged battle concerning what we should do about global warming. Since then, global warming has been, become passe, and we're all talking about global climate change now. But at this time, <clears throat> there was a, a symposium, and uh, I want to read just a few words from uh, a report on that symposium. NASA's climate, uh, chief climate scientist is in hot water with colleagues and at least one lawmaker after calling on citizens to engage in civil disobedience. That is what is being called the largest uh, public protest of global warming ever seen in the United States. In a video, uh, Dr. James Hansen and by the way, again, he is NASA's uh, chief climate scientist, or was at the time, seen urging Americans to, quote, take a stand on global warming during the March the 2nd protest at Capitol Power Plant in southeast Washington, D.C. Quote, we need to send a message to Congress and the President. We want them to take the actions that are needed to preserve climate for young people and future generations, and all life on the planet, says Dr. Hansen, who likened coal-fired power plants to, quote, factories of death. And he claimed that he was muzzled by the Bush administration uh, when he tried to warn of this uh, several times prior to that speech that he made. Interesting. Global warming at that time being blamed on coal-fired power plants putting uh, particulate matter and carbon dioxide into the air. As a matter of fact, since that time, <clears throat> a number of uh, very prominent scientists have risen to take issue with Dr. Hansen, noting that the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere has actually dropped, and noting also that from uh, roughly uh, the year 2000 until the year 2010, the relative uh, climate or base temperature of the planet has dropped by uh, a fraction of a degree. So uh, there's a lot of controversy about the concept of global warming. Uh, that being the case, uh, uh, people are backpedaling now and calling it global climate change. If you recall, uh, and I'm holding here a news release from 2010, I, I dragged out a few old oldies for this one. Uh, the 15th of July 2010, as reported in the London Evening Standard, the Prince of Wales, Bonnie Prince Charlie, <laughs> launched a stinging attack on climate skeptics, deriding them for peddling pseudoscience. In a speech to the world business leaders at a climate change seminar, Charles criticized the group for apparently intimidating people from, quote, adopting the precautionary measures necessary to avert environmental collapse. Wow. So, uh, as you know, Prince Charles has gotten very dramatic on this subject several times. Uh, again, now we're talking about climate change rather than just global warming. But it's all being blamed on man. That is, uh, it's being termed anthropogenic climate change, man-caused climate change, which brings me to a, uh, a current news release, and this one is very fascinating, <clears throat> coming again from England, uh, and it uh, is a pronouncement by 
uh, a meteorological scientist by the name of Professor Kerry Norgard. Comparing skepticism of man-made global warming to racist beliefs, an, Oregon an Oregon-based professor of sociology and environmental studies has labeled doubts about anthropogenic climate change a, quote, sickness for which individuals need to be, quote, treated. And that's Professor Carrie Norgard, who is currently uh, appearing at the Planet Under Pressure Conference in London, England. She's presented a paper in which she argues that, quote, cultural resistance to accepting the premise that humans are responsible for climate change must be recognized and treated as an aberrant sociological behavior. Isn't that amazing now? We are politicizing one's attitude about the weather and, and stating uh, publicly at a climate change seminar that uh, those people who insist that uh, anthropogenic uh, climate change is, is, uh, is simply a made-up case must be treated uh, in some psychological way or other. Norgard equates skepticism of climate change alarmists whose data is continually proven to be politicized, agenda-driven, and downright inaccurate and by the way, she uh, likens it to racism, noting that overcoming such a viewpoint poses a similar challenge to racism or slavery in the U.S. South. You need to be treated for your aberrant beliefs on the weather. Professor Norgard considers that fuzzy studies academics, such as herself, must stand shoulder to shoulder with the actual real climate scientists who know some math uh, in an effort to change society and to change individuals for their own good. So, for your own good, you must be persuaded that anthropogenic climate change is a fact. This, uh, friends, is basically a religion that we're talking about here. Uh, the belief in climate change, uh, in, in my opinion, is uh, being likened to salvation. Uh, people preaching the good word that we must uh, save the climate in order to save mankind are uh, doing nothing more or less than preaching a new gospel, <laughs> the gospel of saving the planet. And if you disagree, uh, you need to be taken off to some institution and treated for your uh, strange mental malady. All of which brings me back to the Bible. And it's fascinating when you read the Bible on the subject of weather. <clears throat> God was talking uh, to uh, his friend, uh, to his friends, uh, who had gathered to discuss Job's problem, uh, affliction, and in the end, we have this, this uh, uh, remark concerning God and the weather. For he saith to the snow, "Be thou on earth." Likewise to the small rain and to the great reign of his strength. He sealeth up the hand of every man, that all men may know his work. Then the beasts go into dens and remain in their places. Out of the south cometh the whirlwind, out of, uh, and cold out of the north. By the breath of God frost is given, the, by the breadth of the waters it is frozen. Also by watering he wearieth the thick cloud, he scattereth his bright cloud, and it is turned around by his counsels that they may do whatsoever he commandeth them upon the face of the world in the earth. He causeth it to come, whether for correction, or for his land, or for mercy. Fascinating statement in the book of Job. <clears throat> A concluding remark on the weather, basically that, that God controls the weather. Uh, to repeat here in Job uh, 37.13, he causeth it, that is the weather, he causeth it to come, whether for correction, or for his land, or for mercy. You couldn't be any clearer than that. And you know, uh, if I were to have a uh, conversation with Dr. Carrie Norgard, I think I would probably disagree with her and she with me. But I would try to convince her that it's not anthropogenic. The weather is caused by God himself. And by the way, one of these days, there's coming a judgment in which we will see mega-weather events 
as described in the book of Revelation. A little something to think about on a Tuesday, March the 3rd. Gary Stearman, keep looking up.